These are the shadows of things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. You are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my Wicked Winter series. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's video is going to be about the ghosts of Christmas past in the literal sense. So if you believe in the paranormal at all, you know that you can't really plan when you're gonna see the spirits or when you do what their intentions really are. But these experiences all happened around Christmas and they were not expecting them to join them. So if you celebrate, I want to say Merry Christmas and let's discuss the literal ghosts of Christmas past. By the way, I am posting all the way up until New Year's Eve the 31st, so don't you worry, this is not the last video. I will continue to be posting, so you can come back tomorrow and see a whole new video from me. Now let's get back to the story. The first story is from a girl named Paulina, who didn't believe in spirits until about 10 years ago in Samoa. She was playing hide and seek in the village of her mom's old village with the little kids around there in Satua. She was quite young and followed her older cousin around. They were all hiding in the dark with no problem. They knew where to go because they all lived there, but she didn't. She was just visiting for the holidays. They were all hiding in the graveyard in the shadows waiting for the boy who was it to go and find them. This boy went into the church and they watched him and he never came back out. They went in and they found him passed out. And when he awoke, he told them that there was a little boy at the altar who, they, who he thought was his brother, who he ran up to, tapped the shoulder, and then the boy disappeared in front of him. And that is when he fell to the ground passing out. And even worse, this boy's brother had been at home the whole time. He never played with any of them. So why did the boy who was it think his brother was there? Who was it really? Another story began in 1995 around Christmas time where a teen girl was at her aunt and uncle's house in North Dakota at a reservation. The other family members were watching TV, some of the kids were playing in the back rooms or asleep, but this teen girl and her aunt and uncle were around the table playing puzzle, or playing, putting together a puzzle. This girl's cousin worked at a casino and would often get home around midnight to 1 a.m. And so she did this that night, she came in, she sat all of her stuff down, then she went to join them. But when they were all talking, this cousin asked this teen girl, Hey, who was that standing next to you and who was it in the corner? I can't find them anywhere. And the teen girl was like, I don't know who you're talking about. And that's when this cousin told her, well, when I was pulling up, I saw through the window that someone looked as though they were behind you playing with your hair. She said this person was running her hand through this teen girl's hair as, a, as though like a mother does to a child. And after being freaked out for so long, they finally came to the conclusion that maybe it was actually the cousin's mother who had passed away on her birthday a week before Christmas back in 1992. But they still couldn't figure out who it was lurking in the corner. And now every time around Christmas time, strange things occur and they just tell themselves that this cousin's mother is visiting them. Then in another story, in 1996, a girl named Caitlin claims that a poltergeist began to happen in her home at Christmas time. They lived there from when she was seven years old to 19, and she said that she always felt like she was being watched ever since they moved in. She always felt like she was not alone, and this house was in the small town of Bluffton, Indiana, and that Christmas she actually brought a friend to spend the night. That night they were sitting in the living room watching TV when the heat briefly went off. They didn't think much of it until the temperature started dropping rapidly. And then Caitlin rose to go and turn up the heat and that is when the tree, the Christmas tree, began shaking violently and ornaments were flying off left and right. They ran upstairs terrified, laid on the bed, and their cat even came to lay down with them because he was terrified. But then they noticed that the door was slightly open and they peered out and they saw a tall white figure run across the house. Her friends saw the same thing and never stayed the night again. It went away for a while. There wasn't much activity going on that she noticed until she became chronically ill. 
She was near death twice and after that she could just sense things that other people couldn't. She felt the nagging sensation that she was being watched again but once she began to get better and was in remission, the activity actually stopped. But when she was 18, she began to experience things like never before. With the death of her grandfather, she became very obsessed with death and would often visit cemeteries. But when this activity began again, it was in voices that she would hear. It was like the TV had been turned on. She would hear a flurry of voices coming from downstairs or even more frightening, outside of her room. Her parents were asleep. She could hear them breathing through the vent because they were right next door. So she would go outside her room and kind of just look around, but there was never any TV on. And that's when she began to see these shadow figures. They varied in size and were always human shaped, except for one. One night she was out looking once again. She had the cat in her arms, when all of a sudden it started to growl ferociously, unlike anything ever before. That's when she looked down and saw a large dog running across the hallway. And they didn't own a dog. The cat growled and the shadow disappeared. But in all other experiences, these shadow figures were human-sized or even child-sized, but they always terrified her. She confessed what she had been dealing with to her parents eventually, and they took her to a psychologist. But they couldn't find anything wrong with her. And the activity continued up until a few months before they moved out of that house. A dark aura spread around this house, a heaviness and an uncomfortable feeling that she couldn't shake. She would get so frustrated with what was going on there that often when she would leave a room, she would turn off the light and then she would hear a clicking sound. She turned back around and the light was back on. And at one point she got so frustrated that she said, quit playing games. Could you shut the light off, please? and the light turned on right before her eyes. One time she was lying in bed when she heard the sound of someone almost sitting in her desk chair. So she sat up to see who it was. Nobody was there, but there was an imprint in the chair as though somebody was sitting there. It got so bad that she often had to stay the night in her parents' rooms just to get any sleep. In August of 2008, they moved into a new house and nothing abnormal has happened since. She admits that she shouldn't have been going to cemeteries, trying to communicate with ghosts, provoking them, and that that is a good possibility of why they were so attached to this house and her. But one night she went back to her old house to collect some things. And while she was there, she was heading out to leave when she saw a dark figure run across the lawn. She jumped in her car, drove away, and never looked back. This next ghost story is a little more innocent. There was a nine-year-old girl named Misty who on Christmas Eve couldn't get to sleep like most little girls, little boys in the world. And so she was really thirsty. She lived in Texas, it was hot, and she also wanted to spy. So she decided to crack open the door to see if she could go get some water. She saw someone bend over and then stand up in her living room. He was in red and white, but she could also see the Christmas lights that were in front of him through him as though he was transparent. He started placing these stockings in their spots and he went to turn around and she freaked out, closed the door and jumped into bed. The next morning she told her little sister about what had happened and was telling her this is exactly where her stockings are. I saw it all happen and sure enough, when they went out to see their presence, the stockings were exactly where Misty said that they would be. And from then on, she believed in Santa wholeheartedly even if it was the ghost version of him. So those were the ghost stories that I found for Christmas around Christmas time. And I just thought it was a little more, you know, bright and uplifting and kind of cool yet creepy stories for this Christmas. I think it's a beautiful day to just share stories and listen to stories and be around people you love. And if you don't have anyone you love this year, please know that I love you. If you're watching this right now, even if you just stumbled across this, I have a place in my heart for you and I am here for you if you don't have anyone. So please never think that you are alone. I and many other people in this world have love for you, even if you can't necessarily be right next to us or feel our hugs, know that our heart is out there for you. and. 
I have the utmost love and respect for you. So let this year be a, a learning year to really know yourself and love yourself and experience this Christmas alone because alone doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It can be a wonderful experience that is unlike anything else. I think you know yourself far more and far better when you experience things alone. And so I want you to know it's not a bad thing if you are alone or sad this Christmas whatsoever. It doesn't have to be this magical, wonderful, happy time because for a lot of us, it's not. It's just another day that we have to get through and you will get through it. You don't need fancy sparkling lights. You don't need presents. Just take it day by day. Nap all day if you need to. Eat a Christmas cookie or two or just eat a regular meal if that makes you too sad. Please know that you can have an amazing day whether it's a holiday or not. And you can live to see the next Christmas that may be, that may far exceed your expectations. I just want to wish you all a good day. It doesn't have to just be a Merry Christmas because obviously there are people who don't celebrate but even if you do and you don't want to celebrate, just please have a good day. And if it's not a good day, just have an okay day. Just have a you day where you relax and take care of yourself. So don't forget, I will have a video out tomorrow if you want to come back and watch it. We're gonna go back to true crime since we've done a few Christmassy stories, but so it's after Christmas tomorrow, we're gonna go back to true crime, which you all seem to enjoy so much. So don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye. No outline would be visible in the dense gloom of wherein they melted away. Yeah.